this is going to be the first video where we start to talk about Redux and sort of where it differs from just doing plain old React. And uh, one of the main things behind Redux is that we keep all of the data that is related to our application in a store. So another way to say that is rather than holding our state in a component state, we hold our state in a Redux store. And we don't have many different components that have many different states. We have one giant object that contains all of our data for all of our store. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our finished one right here. And uh, I'm going to find our React one here. And I'm clicking on the provider here. We're going to learn about what that is in a future video. But you'll see that there's a store here and there's a method called get state. So if I want to access this provider component, I can type dollar $R. And what that is, that's just a shortcut for whatever is currently selected in the React DevTools. I say dot store dot get state. And when I call that, it's going to return to us um, whatever is in our store. And in this case, we've got our comments, which is uh, this is all the different comments for uh, all the different pictures. You can see like, what is your lighting source? Or what sort of, these are just comments from my Instagram posts. And then there's also all of the posts here. So this is the first one. This is the lunch in Hammond. You can see caption, the code, the source, the ID, and how many likes are actually on that specific photo. So all this data is stored in our store. And when we go ahead and uh, click on one, when we go ahead and like it, all of that data is going to be updated in our actual store. So we need to go ahead and first we're going to create our store. And we're not going to see much uh, about how that works, because once we have our store, we're going to get into reducers and actions. And those are sort of the the two core components behind working with Redux. In order to interface with Redux, we need to create our store. Now I've created this store.js file right inside of my client folder, not inside of components. And we're going to write our JavaScript to do that. So of course, we need a couple dependencies to import. We need uh, create store. And we need compose from Redux. And again, we're going to learn about what all these are in just a second. We need to import sync history with store from React, Rotor, Redux. Now, what that's going to allow us to do is to hook up React Rotor with our Redux, and you're going to see the benefits of, of doing that in uh, in a future video. And then finally, we want to import browser history. And you may remember in main.js or in our reduxogram.js, we imported browser history, and then we fed that to the router. Now, in order to uh, get us to connect the two, React Router and Redux, we're going to not just feed the router browser history directly, but we're going to uh, slightly modify it in our store.js. So we need to import it into here just for now, and we'll modify that in just a second. So browser history from React Router. And now there's a couple other things we need here. We need to import the root reducer. Now, what is a root reducer? We haven't learned that yet, but we need to have it here in order for us to, to keep going. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to look at what are actions, what are action creators, and what are reducers. And those are sort of the, the core concepts behind Redux and how we're going to be able to update and, and pull data from it. So let's just say import root reducer from, and now here we're going to do a relative link to a file that does not yet exist, but we will do that very soon. So reducers forward slash index, and that's going to be a root reducer. And then finally, we need some like default data uh, in order for us to actually work with it, right? Because um, the data that we are working with here, we've got posts and we've got a whole bunch of comments that are on here. I'm not pulling these from an API or anything for simplicity's sake, but uh, we need some sort of default data so that when the application loads itself, uh, it has something to to populate in here before we go ahead and, and modify it by liking them and, and leaving comments on these videos. And that data is going to come from, I've got a data folder here and inside of that, we've got a post.js, which contains all of our data. And you could be pulling this from an API as well, um, as well as comments.js, which has all of the different comments related to those specific posts. So we need to import those into our store.js. So we're gonna say import comments from data for such comments. And I'm just going to duplicate that over and we want to grab posts from that. So we've imported all the methods that we need. We imported the root reducer yet we yet have to make as well as we imported some data. So let's get actually writing some code. First thing we need is uh, create an object for the default data. So those two things that we just 
imported. So we'll say const default state equals, and I'm going to give it posts and comments. So if you've never seen this before, this is some ESX. It's the same thing as doing posts is posts and comments is comments. But in ESX, you don't need to do this if the property key and the variable name that you're setting it to is the same. We simply just need to put the name of the variable there. So good, we've got that up and running. Now we need to make the store. So const store equals create store, right? We just uh, implement, we just imported that method right here. And create store takes two things. First, the root reducer. And the root reducer is how we're going to be able to interface with it. And it also needs the default state, right? So that's why we just created the default state right here. You could also just pass in uh, an object little right into that, but I like to keep it nice and clean in case I ever needed to update uh, the actual state that I'm working with here. Um, and then finally, we need the history. Cons history equals sync history with store, and we are going to pass it the browser history, which is the browser history is when I go from page to page to page to page with React Router, uh, it's keeping track of, of where I've gone. So we're gonna take that browser history and that push state and we're going to sort of weave in the actual store. We need that to be accessible to other files because we're creating it in our store.js, but we are only, we're going to be using it right here, right? We're not going to do it just yet, but that's where we're going to be using it. So how do you get something out of one file into another? Well, you export it. So we're going to stick an export in front of that one right there. And then finally, let's also export uh, our store right here. We could have also have done export default const store, but we're going to say export default store at the bottom right here. Good. So we've created our store right here. It's not going to show us anything just yet because we have yet to create actions, action creators, as well as our reducers.